hi welcome back to the ANS way with me Sel and Anne and this, today's video is a special one because we're gonna do a one year review and we're trying to think what do we want to do in the review and I think you said why don't we ask was it you or was it me I think I suggested no that we, we were driving I think I did it no I think it was me I said why don't we create a question on YouTube um, and ask the people I what they like want. It was me that came up with that idea. <laughs> so we decided to put out um, a question over what would you like to know about the first year living in the US? And I was expecting it to take about a week to get some answers, but within overnight, we've ended up with quite a few. So we've decided to do 10 answers to the questions that we've been asked between YouTube and Instagram. Yeah. and. Whilst we've glanced at some of them, we're actually this will be pretty much kind of free in the sense of we've not, <laughs> I've not looked reviewed, at them we've not planned our answers, so we're literally going to read the questions and answer them here for you. So we're going to start with a couple of the questions that have come up on the YouTube post. So we've done them in two places, as Anne said, and this is the first person that responded on there. So this is from Mark. He says, I'm really curious as to your ultimate goal, permanent US residency, different city residents, different country, US real estate portfolio investment. Maybe at the end of your video, you could map out your future plans. I mean, this is a dedicated video. <laughs> a, <laughs> so, it's a, so actually very, a very good question. It's very, very good, actually. Um, yeah, I, I think we could do almost do a dedicated one. That's almost like four questions in one. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll try and answer them briefly. So what was the first part of the question? He, he, I mean, he's. Mark really wants to know what's our ultimate goal. Are we looking okay. for permanent residency in the US and where are we looking I'll, I'll take that first bit. So what's my ultimate goal? I think we've mentioned this before. My ultimate life goal really is to be happy and comfortable. And I think that um, for me, what that generally means is sun and never having to worry about money. And however I need to get there legally um, is what I will do. So my goal's quite broad, but also specific I need to be warm in the sun yeah. and I need to have money so I don't have to worry if I don't want to work don't have to work go on a free year holiday so that's kind of my overall goal I would say mine aligns except for the working part because I don't mind working and so for me I want to get the maximum enjoyment I can out of work but also that work-life balance so for me it is now I've been spoiled with living in the sun I don't think I could go back to gray cold even now in Vegas if the sun's not shining I'm in a bad mood <laughs> and it's just like one hour of no which sin. is actually very different to how she used to be at home because oh it's not that bad it's fine we did get seven hours of sun this year and she'd like come up with these crazy <laughs> rationalizations of why it's good and now we have over a month, maybe one or two grey days. This is about as grey as it's been recently. And you moan. Yeah, I do. I am precious now. But I think it's because I naturally always like to look for the positive. And if I'm in a bad situation, I try not to fester on that real negative. Whereas Ant will just point it out. Whereas I'll try and find the positive. In terms of being a permanent US resident, uh, I think for me, yes because I would like the option, at least for now, which is why we're going for the green card, to be here permanently and not be tied to the type of visa. So we're on a non-immigrant non visa, which means we can only be here temporarily, up to a maximum of seven years, seven years on that one. So for me, it's quite important that we get the green card, that we can be a permanent resident here, and then we can be more free with jobs, how we live, uh, coming in and out yeah. of the country. My feeling on the US and I'm sure I haven't seen the questions yet but I'm sure there'll be questions around that it doesn't it's not the be all and end all for me the US was a goal because it was one of the first or was the first place I went internationally and I love parts of the US and the system is similar enough to the UK system although there are some massive differences um, that it feels comfortable and it feels like the right stepping stone also the variety of places which we've mentioned before we're not set on vegas at all and you'll see there's some videos coming up where we're looking in, in other places so i'm happy as long as i'm happy so i'm happy to move around until i'm happy essentially so could be another city could end up being vegas in five years actually we really love it here we don't know yet 
yeah i would definitely say the same i don't know if vegas is the right place but having traveled a bit across the us there are so many different places that can suit us that we're just going to spend the time figuring out where we ultimately want to be what was the next part of his question different countries so i would say i'm definitely open i've never been and we i think we were talking about this this weekend how we're i don't think we're we live quite a nomadic lifestyle i think by choice so i think we would always choose to move so if work did give me the opportunity to go and live somewhere in southeast asia or somewhere i would probably do it just for the experience so i'm definitely open for different countries yeah definitely different cities in the u.s as well okay um, US real estate portfolio, this is definitely <laughs> one for you. <laughs> uh, this would take a long time. So in short, um, I don't believe in rental. I believe in renting to other people. Whatever free cash we have available, wherever we are living. So if it's gonna be 10 years in the States, I will continue to buy property in the US. Um, we've already discussed the property that we have being built at the moment, and you can watch those videos. Um, whether to move in there for a year and then immediately yeah. rent it out and go on to the next one and maybe do that so you can expect our us portfolio to grow we also sold a property in the uk which we're going to take some of the money from and buy somewhere here so we're pretty much going to use any free cash that we have to pre to always be looking into real estate investment for us yeah. and if we're going to be in the us we're certainly looking to build in that here hopefully that answers your multitude of questions <laughs> was it mark it was mark yeah, yeah. so and i think when as we get to the finishing this video in terms of the one year i think we will allude a bit more to our future goals as well okay right so the next question um so this is from rohit he says uh we are they're relocated to the us next month Ooh, exciting <laughs> where are you moving to <laughs> yeah do we know no he hasn't said on there let um, us know where you're going to uh, we would really like to know what you have done, oh, what we would have done differently. And also some top information about topics like work-life balance. <laughs> you can answer that really yeah. well. <laughs> Time management um, would also help. What I would have done differently. So in 2019, when we found out, I looked into properties immediately. Oh, yeah. I had absolutely no intention of renting here. And everyone's like, slow down. You don't need to, let's rent for a little bit. Biggest mistake. If you can find somebody that will loan you the money, which we were able to because we had our loan approved in January 2020 yeah. before we came here, um, buy somewhere immediately. It was a massive mistake. All of the properties are 200,000. I think the cheapest one's 180,000 more than when we got our loan approved. It wouldn't have mattered where we moved into. We should have just picked somewhere, bought it, sold it now, been 180,000 up, and then used that on another property. That was the biggest mistake. Uh, and I think that's the biggest mistake people make financially in life. Buy, as soon as you can afford it, just buy. Um, the second part of the question was time. Effectively, hopefully you can hear us over the crazy wind. It's very windy. <laughs> um, the time that you get back by living in the state, salaries are so high and taxes so low in places like Vegas we take home about the same amount of money with just one person working we were both working in the uk yeah so that gives you an idea um my personal view on selena the stuff they say about americans working is definitely not true they work probably a similar amount of hours and from what my experience is seeing you they're quite relaxed and your company at least give unlimited holiday once you're at director level and above and people use it so yeah. I wouldn't say there's a vast difference. I'm sure if you come out here and you decide that you want to work 60 hours a week, they'll appreciate it and, and you'll work 60 hours a week. And I'm sure if you manage it that you work 35 hours a week, they'll fine. appreciate it and you'll work 35 hours a week. That's my observation, not just Selena, but her colleagues and the people that we've met. Yeah, so I would definitely say what you hear about, oh, the work-life balance, hardly any holiday. Now, I know there are companies here in the US that don't provide much holiday or vacation days as they call it but there are so many companies now that don't assign a number so it's not even about being a director level or above like my company there are other companies that do that as a standard but also i'm hearing from others where even when you do get assigned holiday 
the company doesn't really mind as long as you're getting your job done they're not really that strict with how you take your time off as long as you're getting the work done i can definitely speak to the team that i manage i when i i recently changed my team a few months ago and one of the things i said to them is i don't expect them to be working 12 hour days in fact i'm not impressed by it i want you to do a normal seven eight hour day um, if some days it might be longer some days shorter but i would definitely say work-life balance is no different here to the uk for me yeah and we're often out for happy hour on a friday afternoon yeah i think it's company dependent much like the uk your management structure um, depending on how old school they are but I wouldn't say it's hugely different to the UK if that's where you're coming no, from and the thing is it doesn't mean like everyone knows the work that you have to do is the work that you have to do so the work gets done if I have to be on a call at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. which yeah, you I, are which I am <laughs> very often um, I do it and uh, sometimes I and because I have a global role sometimes I'm on a call later on I would say it's a lot a bit more rare for me but as long as you're getting the work done that's all that matters and you don't have to be working these ridiculous so the last bit of the same this same question was um, I think immigrants five percent time is probably lost in visa related mm. activity. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> correct. I would, honestly, sometimes it feels like even more than that. Your first year, so the whole time leading up to coming to the US, then once you get here, and especially if you're like us, where we're applying for the green card, you will find a lot of your time. Yeah spent doing all these ancillary stuff related to your visa. Yeah, and fighting battles you should never be fighting and the US system is archaic and old and this is even speaking to people, I recently spoke to a lady that used to do the medical for the immigration and she just shakes her head and is like this is it's ridiculous, she left that job. Um, so it can be quite challenging but you have to understand that you're going to go through the pain for the first year, maybe two years and then it's kind of behind you. In fact, point. we were talking about this today. Yeah. But I can't wait to just get over that hurdle. And we've taken a stance of just doing more in the first year just so that we can get it done as quickly as possible. But it does mean we're spending more time now. Um, as an example, and had to, you've got to send more evidence for your work permit bec only because it's taken them so long to, to respond. To process it. So there's, basically, it's they've taken eight months to process my work permit and your photos are only valid for six months so when I sent it in eight months ago they were valid but they've taken so long they're now invalid so they sent the application back to me saying I have to give them new photos it's a ridiculous thing similar with the lady that works in the clinic she said um, what people were doing is they were having to get their medical in order to apply for their green card because you have to you have, have no it choice, or your yeah. change of status but the medical lasts for one year they've changed this now uh, but the green card application process was taking two years or more so some people were having to do it multiple times so the system definitely can do with some reworking yeah and i mean they, it's I, companies are typically sponsoring it but the medical exam is 300 dollars each per person. and that's not without that like, the boosters and everything else that you have to pay for so it's a, it's a, a lot of money to spend every time as well right so some of the questions from instagram okay so i'm going to do this in order I believe of how they came through to make it fair for everyone so it starts the other way so the first one is from retro mum one <laughs> how difficult was it to get a mortgage in the US in the first year so we've kind of touched on that yeah it's a not a straightforward answer it really depends on how financially savvy you are who you bank with and how well you can convince people <laughs> because for us if we go through hsbc that's really easy because they're an international bank that has a headquarters in new york i think they are now it seems initially like it's going to be really easy however when you apply to them they ask for a lot of information and the minimum you can do is 25 percent deposit and ten thousand held in an account on top of that so when you're looking at homes here, if you're looking at 700,000, you're gonna be looking at a lot of money that you have to put down, as well as giving them 10 grand to just hold on to. So that's the easiest way. We did also find uh, one lender here, or one broker here that would consider our situation. But again, you have to get all of your financial information from the UK, represent it to them. It was a four or five day yeah. process. So can it be done? Yes. 
how easy? Not that easy, I would say, but it can definitely be done. If you are in the position to, do not believe all the people that, and we've touched on this before, that say wait a year, that you need to wait a year to get your US credit up. That's not the case. If you're coming from the UK, you can use Nova credit. So you can definitely 100% get a mortgage. And back to the first question, it is something now, even if we had done it a year, like once we'd got here, I wish we had. Yeah, big mistake, but th these are the things that you learn. Hopefully you learn from our mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> right, so next question is from MCT567. Have you had any restrictions on where you could travel whilst you're converting your L1? Yeah, that's something that you mentioned before. There are, as far as I can remember, restrictions on the amount of time that you could spend out of the country and even to the point sometimes it's not worth you leaving the country because there are certain situations where it will, I guess, auto-cancel your application because you've been out of the country. Yeah, so this is, so, okay, so if you're on it, if I'm understanding the, correction, the question correctly, if you're on an L1 and you're not applying for anything, like transferring to a green card, you should be fine, but you still have to be mindful of how much time you're out of the country because you still have to be here as a, over at least half the year to be considered a resident. Mm -hmm. So if you truly are traveling a lot, you do need to consider that. Now, when you're going to and your green card and you go through the adjustment of status, now you can continue to use your L1 to go in and out the country, but you do still need to be mindful of that. And that's part of the application is the attorneys will ask you, are yeah. you intending to travel? Where are you traveling to? How long for? So yeah. I'll best advise you on when you shouldn't or what you should be doing. And I'm sure it changes with time as well. So it's something you always want to be up on your solicitor or your attorney with, because the advice we might give now will probably change in two months, as we found out with the L2. An L2 visa six months ago didn't mean you could work yeah. as of December or January so, of yeah. this year you can now work on an L2 it's so yeah. it changes a lot in terms of where there isn't any real difference um, as soon as you're out leaving to go out of the US that's where any of the restrictions would come into play so you do need to check that the great thing about the US though there are so many places you, you can, can go yeah. so if it's more about just taking a break going on vacation there are so many places within the US Hawaii that we do intend to go mm -hmm. to so if it's about that there are definitely ways I would say avoid it in those times if you can um, so the next question from the same person is uh, this is quite funny I like this do you miss being part of the storms that we're having in the UK right now? now I don't know how this is coming across on camera uh, it is extremely extremely windy here it's probably over 50 60 miles an hour and we know in the UK right now they've just had that hundred oh, mile yeah, an hour really storm bad. but it's frequently very windy here for three four months um, to the point that you have to hold, hang on to your car doors. You can't just let <laughs> they never go. tell you this about Vegas. Yeah, it is a valley and it is sitting in between the mountains, so it kind of makes sense. Um, but in answer, direct answer to your question, I don't miss anything about the British weather. <laughs> it's just all. It's it's honestly to me, if they said you got to serve three months in a US prison, but then you get to come out, or you just live it, I would rather or a year in prison. <laughs> it's just like a prison sentence for me. It's everything that my body tells me is unnatural. I have to say, regarding the UK storms that had happened on Friday, I actually thought it was a joke. I'm not, I've been dipping in and out of social media, so I missed a lot. And then I saw something come up on TikTok and I had genuinely thought it was a joke until I saw all the messages from friends and family saying about like bins, fences, trees, things going into other neighbors, seeing all the memes come up. I'm with Anne. I would rather be here where it's windy and the sun is shining and it's not freezing cold and I can still be in a t-shirt. <laughs> Right, so this is from, oh, how do you pronounce that? Herda D. Herda D. I think that's, They're oh. probably butchering <laughs> Sorry. the name. <laughs> Sorry. Um, do you consider settling here now and becoming American citizens? Ah, so we have actually kind of discussed this. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know where I would settle. I'm kind of in the moment always. So I could say yes, definitely now, because I'm happy now. And then in a year's time, I'd want to move somewhere else. Um, I would definitely say I could definitely see myself settling in the US. I'm just not sure where. To be an American citizen would be great because it then means, other than I'm sure if you do something 
outlandish, they can't ever remove you. So it would be silly for us not to go for that once we qualify. And because we can hold dual UK and US, there's no loss to us to become yeah. a citizen. So I would say, yes, I would. And more than likely, I probably would end up settling here. I just don't, wouldn't want to commit to saying that. Yeah, I hadn't really thought about becoming an American citizen until I got to the point of the green card. And just for clarification for people watching, because lots of people do get confused, a green card is not the same as being an American citizen. So I often say this to some of the messages. So the green card gives you permanent residency, mm -hmm. but you're not protected in the same way as an American citizen. So that's the issue. And for me and Anne, if I knew eventually that I definitely was going to settle here. I think I would do the same. I, I agree. I would probably get um, American citizenship because it really would make sense. So this is from Denise Primrose. Is it everything? Ah, uh, is it is it everything you had hoped it would be? And would you ever go back to the UK? You want to answer first? I'll go. Um, is it every? Yes, it is. It is truly everything that I'd hoped it would be. Um, I can't express how nice it is to be somewhere where you feel where the sun is shining, you're naturally in a good mood, um, that you can easily get to places and the variety of what it offers here. So already in a short space of time, I've been to Charleston, I've gone to California. Um, so definitely it is. And I now know that there is a better life out there. So I often, when I speak to my family and friends now, I honestly feel that we were being tricked. So this is me personally speaking. I feel that there was about the system in the UK, the weather, you're almost conditioned to think that that's okay when actually there is a better life. And for us, I would say, yes, I do love it here. Would I ever go back to the UK? No, not out of choice. <laughs> so if I had to, I would, and I would be fine with it to see family and friends, but I wouldn't want to. Yeah. Um, similar. Would I go back to the UK? Not out of choice. Obviously, we're not permanent residents here. We're not citizens of another country. So things could happen and you could go back. So yeah, would I ever? Yes, if I'm forced to, but not never out of choice. I'd rather go and I'd go to Spain, Italy, New Zealand, Australia, Singapore, as we found out is nice. Anywhere but the UK for me. Um, it's everything that I hoped it would be, but with a caveat. There's something I still miss about not going to California. So, is America everything I thought it was going to be? Yes. I feel Vegas is missing a little something. I think it's missing the, the sea. I think it's missing the coastline. I think it's missing a more stable temperature. Um, there are some things that it's missing, however, it's probably half the cost of living, so there's always a, a, a balance to it. But overall, I'm ten times happier here than at home, even with missing family and friends, which tells you a lot, because imagine if your family and friends were out here, that would be it, you'd be happy forever. Yeah, and I would also add, I also came here um, with an understanding of what I thought the negatives were. So I never came here thinking America was going to be perfect yeah, we've said for people this. Yeah. and their system. I came here with a very open mind to that fact of there's going to be elements that are just not that good. In fact, terrible. But on balance, we still prefer it overall. Yep. Right, so the next one is from Shayla Suri. Do you regret anything since moving? Ah, oh, simple question, but... Hmm. Regret anything? Uh, the one we mentioned, not buying a house instantly. Um, it's a very good question. Yeah. Do I regret anything? I don't think I do, and I, I probably not a direct answer to move into the US. There's very few things in my entire life that I've regretted. Oh yeah, that's doing. your personality. Yeah, and even if it's been a really bad situation, it's kind of life. So you have to accept that. And in fact, we were talking about this at dinner. If you go through life, in my opinion, with these things where you really disliked or regretted or wish you hadn't, you're gonna really struggle in life because things come up and things change and things don't always go your way. So I tend not to look at things that way. I usually, my regrets are around financial decisions or giving away too much that time. when you had hindsight. Yeah. yeah so if I give away too much time, things I can think about 
where I might have spent, we were talking about one of the workplaces. I've never, not really regretted, even though I don't love work, working at most places, there's always something I've got out of it. Um, there was one workplace that I did work, probably only nine months, and I thought about it, that was such a waste of time. I learned nothing, I spent nine months there, it wasn't a good place to work, why did I spend that time there? However, you could look at it from a different point of view of, that's a lesson. Next time that happens, that. which did happen recently, just before we came out, I was at a place that was not good for me, not good for them, and I just left, and that was it. So I guess, even though I didn't regret. Yeah, I won't say, I, I don't think I'm of that mindset, and there's nothing obvious that I regret other than the house. I think if we could have bought a house earlier, I, I definitely agree. So this is not so much a regret, but something I wish, a bit, a bit that was more of a shame that didn't happen, and it was the lead up to moving because it was during the pandemic and w I had all these plans to meet my friends, <laughs> friends, work colleagues, family and the bit that I, and it is a regret that I couldn't do that is that I didn't get to spend the time in the way that I wanted to before. Yeah, for anybody that's watching this at a different point in time, our entire move process was during the pandemic. So in England, we had these ridiculous, you're locked down, you're not locked down. You can only see half of a friend on a Tuesday at four o'clock. And it was just like ridiculous <laughs> stuff. So people were worried, obviously people don't want to lose their jobs, they don't want to get in trouble with the police. The police even showed up, we weren't even there. They showed up at our house because somebody had a party and threatened us with a 10,000, uh, our apartment, a $10,000 fine. So that's how severe it was at the time we were trying to move. So you couldn't just go and yeah. meet your friends at the park or the pub is really bizarre but that's not a regret because i wouldn't consider it's it a not regret. a regret it's, it's not something you I could just, have done I, anything I, I, couldn't, I couldn't have done anything differently but it's something that i feel is such a shame you that, missed yeah out i missed a bit. out yeah definitely. this is from fifi cara which i think you're living in the u.s yes. now i'm sure you're in california where we wanted to be yeah 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 um so which of your expectations about living in the u.s were confirmed and vice versa <laughs> <laughs> very good question Finance is way better, they get paid more, um, they have far less taxes, their living expenses are overall lower when you take into account. Uh, major thing that I wanted out of life. Um, if you pick a sunny state, it's sunny. <laughs> um, people overall are really friendly and open in a different way to how British people are, but that kind of met my expectations. Um, the ability to travel and experience completely different landscapes is super easy, if expensive. <laughs> um, I would say most of my expectations were met. Uh, the flip side of that, and hopefully somebody else hasn't answered this question because I'm answering it too early, is I was really shocked at the level of competence or the lack of competence in Vegas in particular. I can't even talk about Nevada as a state, but in and around Vegas it is the, the least competent place I've ever been in the world. And I've been to a fair few countries, you've been to even more. Yeah. It's the least competent place. So that's the biggest shock I've had because it feels 50 years behind anywhere on earth. So I was going to say, the first thing that came to mind about, and it was more of the vice versa, that was not an expectation. And especially for Vegas, because it's, to me, it's a holiday destination with lots of people coming in. Bright lights, <laughs> technology. I, I never expected to have the language issues. And that's the bit I would say has almost kind of tarnished my kind of way of thinking as I travel around the US because I'm semi like worried every time I talk to someone in case they don't understand what but I'm But we saying. don't experience it anywhere, anywhere else, but here. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely something that was not an expectation um, about Vegas. Particular things, I, I knew I was going to like the food. You weren't sure, but I had to Of Vegas, yeah. yeah, not the US, but Vegas. Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, the food choices here for me are really, really good. And it was one of the things I was looking forward to. And somewhere, one of the things that we was always going to look for wherever we moved to in the US. So the food options for us, especially because we like Oh, we, food. we eat yeah. good food a lot of the time. The, the thing you have to get used to, especially if you're coming here on holiday, you watch one of our videos, you come here on holiday. If you eat on the strip, um, for example, if you go to a good steakhouse or a good sushi place and there's four of you, you can, without thinking about it, spend four, five, six hundred dollars to a thousand dollars without trying. It's very, very easy. As soon as you come away from the strip, 15 minutes 
maybe not even that. Not you even can, that. Like, the surrounding areas. Yeah. There's some all-you-can-eat sushi places, which sounds terrible because it sounds like the quality is going to be low, but they are no. equal quality to our higher-end restaurants in London for twenty-six dollars per person, and I've preferred the all-you-can-eat sushi here to the high-end ones at home. Yeah. So yeah, I would agree with you on on the food. It's probably exceeded my expectations. Another one that's definitely exceeded my expectations and it's particular to Vegas. And probably if I'd thought about it, I would have known that, but it's the amount of activities and things you can do here in Vegas. I always say this to Anne, there is no reason to be bored in Vegas. There is so much you can do here, whether it's indoor or outdoor activities and places to drive to. So in that sense, I would say it's exceeded my expectations because all the time there is just like whether you want to go to a museum, you want to go hiking, you want to do water sports in the summer, you want to go skiing, you've got Mount Charleston. There is really so much to do and it really does cater for whether you want to do something extreme or something very calm and placid like mm -hmm. walking. So I'd say that has definitely exceeded my expectations. And the next one is from Topeka. 1985. Oh, that's when I was born. Yeah, was. <laughs> How have you adjusted to life in America? Very well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have truly feel like, to me, number one, it never felt, I never had this moment where I felt homesick or it didn't mm. feel normal. We landed here and it felt instantly like home and normal to us. Yeah. Um, so for me, the adjustment was really easy, if complex in certain parts with banking mm, yeah. and getting our driving license, which we don't have still. <laughs> um, yeah. So there are elements of that that's not great, but overall on balance, the lifestyle we're leading, le living is so much better if I think about how much we go out to, we enjoy brunches, we go out to eat, we do activities, we do happy hour. I wasn't doing that in the UK. UK was just grey, cold, maybe without Ooh. the wind. So something, my sister travels a lot um, around the world as well and she's had these years in different countries and even for her she said like the life that she's led as an expat has been so much better in terms of the lifestyle she's had in those other countries and that's something I definitely think I appreciate here and I think when you think about the weather how much that impacts what you can do daily in england you're so reliant on having to do things indoors or if you try to plan something outdoors you're you know it might be raining it's windy whereas here you just have so much more flexibility or if there is an issue just get on a plane or drive jump in the car it's really easy to get to somewhere yeah. and do something easily um, I would say similar I would say the adjustment has been really easy one thing to point out if you haven't watched our channel before is we spent a lot of time in the US I've been coming since I was 14 maybe before um, you've been coming a similar time a little bit after but we've spent so much time accumulated here that we're kind of used to it obviously there's things that you don't know are about to happen because you're not having to get uh, speak to the authorities, uh, you're not having to deal with the gas company. Those are the most difficult things. I think that is pretty exclusive to Vegas though. So the biggest adjustment is people not understanding and then not being able to work outside of the very simplified process that they know. That's the main thing I've not adjusted to. It does really sour the experience here when you're scared to pick up the phone to someone because you know you're going to be on there for an hour and you're going to come off fairly upset. I would also so add to that, and it's kind of linked to the previous question of exceeding expectations uh, and also another person's question about in, like, around the working. Something that's definitely exceeded my expectations are my work colleagues and the people I get to interact with through work. It's not like how they make out like, oh, Americans act this way, their ethic is like this, you have to, they're just normal people. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of them are well-traveled and I definitely have found lots of really good, I would say friends through that as well, that people that I would choose to socialize with and that's what's been really great and that's definitely exceeded my expectations. And in some ways I've found people that I actually feel like I identify a bit more with than I did at home because there was something amiss for me in the UK, especially in the last five years 
I felt that I was different to some of my friends and family. And the thing I find here is that I feel that I'm a bit more similar. How does it feel to finally be out there living the life you almost wanted? Is it surreal? I would assume they mean life you always wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what I thought it was going to be? My friend who moved from, he's actually from Montserrat, moved to the UK, I think in his early teens, and then moved to Barbados three years probably now. Yeah. And I remember yeah, saying to him, because he was yeah. going before us, it's going to be really surreal, and I, I think you'll wake up six months a year later going, wait, I live here. Here I don't, it hasn't hit me in that way. The thing that's surreal for me isn't about moving to the US. The thing that's surreal for me is sometimes I think about being 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, living on a council estate in London and the things that we would do and the limits our financial status would put on us or that were applied to us. And going to the noodle shop was like a big thing and spending three, you remember noodle shops when they come around <laughs> yeah. and spending three pounds or four pounds and you couldn't go anywhere else because that's all you would have. And comparing that to now is actually surreal. And because I've lived it and gone through all of these different phases, that feels surreal to me. And it always keeps me in check and reminds me that I, I feel great. You can't really slip into that. Oh, it's not so good. It does feel that good when you compare it. Living in the US feels quite normal. It feels like I should have probably been born here uh, <laughs> here in California. Yeah, it kind of, it feels as if it should have been. And I'm sure you've had this with certain things in life where this just fits, it feels right. And I'm not really a feely person, but it does just feel right to me. The UK never felt like home. For me, I definitely remember when we got here and landed, it was this sense of relief and I think in particular for us because we had that whole previous year where your visa hadn't come through we didn't know when we would be allowed to travel so that in itself was a, more of a relief that like, oh, we finally made it mm. um, that's how that felt it never like as I said well, as we both said there was never this adjustment it felt so normal to be here but in a good way there are moments for me that are surreal though, and I, I'll describe them. So where we live, we have the mountains in the background and we can see yeah. Great Rock. Yeah. And it gets me, a year later, it still gets me to this moment when we're driving and you can see all the contrasting colors of the mountains and that backdrop and the sun shining. And sometimes I, in my mind, I'm like, wow, I can't believe that we're living here. Mm. And that's just our normal way. And that to me sometimes feels a bit surreal because there's something almost not normal about it. Yeah, it's it. very abstract to the last 35. Our camera decided to cut out. So just finishing off the point about the abstract, <laughs> it's um, it's so different to home, whether you compare it to our forested areas, our green areas, the canals. We don't have mountains. We don't even have big hills, really, yeah. even though all of the UK is hilly. There's lots of gradients. So yeah, I do get what you're saying with it's a little bit surreal when you you live in the mountain range. Yeah, it gets me every morning and I love it when I go to my office and I see like the view of the strip, the mountains. Oh, I did think of one thing. <laughs> one thing that is surreal, exactly what you said about the mountains, but reverse. If you, you head one way, you go to the mountains. The other way, you can see the entirety of the Las Vegas strip. And it's kind of this figment over in the distance. And every time I drive down, I'm like, we live yeah. in Las Vegas, the place where people go to gamble. We barely even visit here. It's really strange because you go in and it's full of people and life and energy and you come out here and, I mean, other than the wind, there's nobody here. <laughs> you don't see anyone, you don't really hear anybody. It's really peaceful. They couldn't be more opposite. So that bit is surreal actually, it's I, a city of two halves, really. Absolutely. Actually, I completely forgot about that. Every time we go to the strip, absolutely, it is a spectacle and it is crazy that we live here when you see the lights, the people. So yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And people pay a lot of money to come here and we can just go there anytime we want and we don't. <laughs> in 23 minutes, maybe 26 minutes to park and walk in. Yeah. Right, so this is going to be our last question. And that is, in visiting other states, which other ones could you live in? Very, very easy for me, uh, California. Uh, 
it really comes down to the scenery that California has and there's a feeling. So for me, when I, I've traveled a lot, not just in the US, globally, but there's definitely countries that I go to and then I just feel a certain way. There's a sense of just feeling at peace, <laughs> comfortable. It just, there's something about it. And California has that. Definitely Southern California near San Diego. When we went to La Jolla, absolutely loved it. Um, would choose to live there. Really like Monterey, Carmel by the sea. Um, it's a bit, it's much more north, so it's not as warm and especially me living yeah. in Vegas. I do like the heat now. Uh, but I do love it there, although I, I always joke that we need to be millionaires, to, billionaires actually to be there. And Tens of millionaires. <laughs> Tens of millions. You've got eight million dollar homes. Or well, the ones we'd look at would probably be between four and eight million, which means you've got to have a substantial amount of money to sustain an eight million dollar home, let alone go out to eat and visit places. <laughs> You'd just be working to pay the, the mortgage. I'm not even sure we can afford the mortgage on it. So yeah, I agree. California, it just has a feel. And the politics, the reason why I wouldn't move there, there's a lot of political things uh, that I disagree with. But this is the beauty of America. You can pack up your stuff and just okay, drive to something else. you agree with. Um, <laughs> There's a lot of things I don't agree with. There's also the really high punishing taxes close to the UK, so it wouldn't be for me right now. Um, another state for me, and we are gonna be doing some videos there fairly soon, is Florida. I have this affinity for Florida, I love Florida. it. I love it. I haven't been for a long time, so it could be different, but there's just something about the smell and the comfort humidity. of the humidity the noises of all of the animals and wildlife. Um, I like that swampy feel as well. So when you're going out into the, they're not mangroves there, what's it called? It's the swamp, isn't it? The Everglades. It? Everglades. Yeah. But I just really enjoy it. I like a little bit of the mania that comes with Floridians as well. As long as it's not too much, it doesn't affect me. I kind of enjoy that. Um, the downside I think is, it's a retirement place and until a lot more younger people, I looked recently at the demographic, one of the areas we looked at, I think the average age was 62.5, <laughs> which is like very, very high to be up that uh, as an, a, average, an average yeah. age. I think here it's something like 35 or, or, or 36 to give it, it's practically double. So it's going to take some younger people like us to move there to Oh yeah, start we'll, we'll be the ones to start the movement there. <laughs> um, in terms of other places, we've only really visited them for really short bursts. The only place I could say that we've visited and I've spent maybe two weeks there in total would be Austin, Texas would definitely be a consideration for me. It's got a lot of what I like, it's got that artsy feel in certain parts, it's got a slightly removed feel in other parts. You can walk from where we would choose to live in Austin, 15 to 20 minutes into the town centre. Amazing city as well with a lake or a river yeah, that runs through really it. Nice. And they're relatively cheap and I know this will sound like a high number but in comparison when you could compare it to places in the UK here. For one and a half million, you will get a mansion, a ranch style mansion, 15 oh, yeah. minutes from the city centre, 15 minute walk from the city centre with a 10 car driveway, four car garage, um, outdoor space, yeah. I mean, garden. they're dream homes for us yeah. coming from the UK. So for us, it's so, that is very cheap if you compare what you would pay. Yeah, for it's something that you can, in not too different, distant future, afford or aspire to have yeah, I would definitely say Austin's the only other place that I've been to and I thought, actually I could see myself, if work said I had to move there or we went there for whatever reason, I could definitely do it. Florida, I don't know, <laughs> for me. I like it to visit and I think it's great that it has the greenery, uh, the beaches, so I think I would love that about Florida. Being in a place like Vegas where there is no humidity practically, I do appreciate going to humid places now because you do see the effects on your skin and your hair. So for me, going to Florida would be nice, although I think the humidity would have an adverse reaction on my hair the other way, <laughs> that I'll be a complete frizzball. frizzball. So I don't know, I'm open to it. We're going to visit, we'll share that with you. So it, it may be a consideration for us. Yeah, I think the main thing, probably we answered this in early, we're not really set. I think the main thing for me is I hate to feel like you have to fit a path, a mould, a place. So if this turns out tomorrow not to be somewhere I want to live, I'm pretty free to just go, nah, 
yeah, we've got a house being built. We'll deal with that when it gets yeah, built. We'll Let's just move somewhere. <laughs> Let's break this lease, pay the money, get on a plane, send our stuff later. Similar to when we were going to move out here. When I thought there was a potential oh, yeah. chance that I couldn't get out here because of all of the restrictions, I'm like, I'm leaving. And just, so they said, but all of our stuff's here. We'll deal with that when we get to where we're going. I'll phone my brother, I'll phone some friends. They can pack up the house. She's like, let's slow down. <laughs> no, I need out. So I operate kind of always from that, that mindset. I'm, I would definitely say I'm definitely willing to try different places. Um, I recently done a trip to Charleston. I've shared that video on the channel, so check that out. Um, I really liked it there. Definitely, it's there was history there. There was different architecture. There was... The, the buildings were so interesting, the the food. So I really liked it, but is it somewhere I would choose to live? I don't know. And that's where it didn't give me the feeling that California did mm. for me, but I definitely thought it was a very beautiful city and it made me realize just how many places there are so nice, that yeah. are so nice in the US. If we, what I would say, if we could find somewhere on the East Coast side, I would like it because the one downside of being here in Vegas or California is the eight hour time difference to the UK. Yeah. And I would say I would, and it does cause issues and edu, we've not mentioned this with the other questions. One of the downsides of here is trying to contact family. My mum's always like, oh, I haven't spoken to you in so long. And it's hard because if you're doing stuff in the morning, by the time you're typically free in the afternoon, it's night time. Yeah. So that free, that those few hours difference of being closer would be better. So if you can pick somewhere on the East Coast, it's better for your family at home. So hopefully, that's the first time I think we've ever done a Q&A. Yeah. Tell us what you think. Yeah, hopefully it's interesting. It's interesting for me because I get to explore some questions I might not have asked myself, so they're good. Yeah, and I, I have to say I really love it because for me, part of this doing this channel has, I like to feel that I know who I'm talking to. So for me, I love the fact that you guys have sent your questions in and that I feel like I'm actually answering a yeah. real person rather than us just talking to <laughs> yeah. ourselves. <laughs> Let us know what you think of this style. Do you want us to do more Q&A? Thanks for watching.